Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for VMworld 2015. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Show my co-host, Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com, Wikibon Research, uh, SiliconANGLE, has SiliconANGLE blog, SiliconANGLE.com, SiliconANGLE.tv, which is The Cube, which we're doing here, and Wikibon.com, which is the research team uh, for SiliconANGLE Media. Uh, thanks for watching. We are uh, live in San Francisco, getting ready to go live with the keynotes here at VMworld 2015, to hear the smashing news, what's happening, what's going on with EMC, the Federation, what's going on with, with VMware and the ecosystem. Uh, Dave here with the analyst perspective. Dave, I got to ask you, um, as an analyst covering uh, the, the cloud, big data, and also infrastructure, what's going on with VMware? I mean, I'll see VMware as a leader. Uh, like Oracle, they have a huge install base in the enterprise. They have a lot of happy customers, but over the years, the business has shifted. Certainly, VMware is under the EMC Federation owned 80% by EMC. So you have kind of a interesting situation where the tail is wagging the dog, if you will. Seems like VMware wants to break out. Seems like VMware needs to be free. Well, it seems like EMC and storage just isn't what people want, even though there's a lot of storage here. What's your take on all these conversations? Well, I mean, EMC's acquisition of, of VMware for 635 million was unnatural in many respects. I mean, had Cisco purchased VMware, it would have been a much more natural fit. Uh, EMC, storage company, storage being such a problem, it was just a very strange relationship, and I think Joe Tucci and, and EMC's board has played it perfectly. I mean, they spun out 20% of VMware, they got value out of that, they created this independent organization that was able to flourish as an ecosystem, and then what did they, what did they do? So that sort of appeased the sort of, you know, the Diane Green era that we have to have, you know, maintain our independence. Then they bring in this visionary Maritz who puts forth this vision of a software mainframe that essentially they executed on. I mean, VMware had and still has a huge lead over OpenStack and even, even Microsoft Hyper-V, but Microsoft has closed the gap considerably. But the big thing that Microsoft has done is it commoditized the hypervisor. And then you combine that with the other front that VMware is fighting, which is Amazon, and you've got a challenge, how do you expand your TAM beyond the hypervisor? And that's why we, see, we saw the NYSERA acquisition going into NSX, that's why we see the efforts around vSAN and, and Evo, that's why we see vCloud Air, we see the acquisition of AirWatch. This is all about expanding okay. the TAM to justify a 30, 40, 50 billion dollar, and ultimately a hundred billion dollar valuation. Okay, the top hallway conversation so far here at VMworld uh, on the streets of San Francisco is EMC under siege by Gordon Gecko, Elliot, <laughs> Capital, the Gordon Gecko of today's marketplace. Really putting a gun to Joe Tucci's head saying, move faster, increase the stock price, break up. I mean, really destructive, evil kind of behavior these hedge funds take. I mean, ultimately, are they right for the takedown? Is it justified? Is Elliott Capital just a corporate raider? Is VMware looking at it, wants to make its move? What's your take on all this? Because there's a lot of different perspectives. I mean, I look at Elliott Capital and I just see just a disrupt, disruptive, uh, evil genius in, in just maximizing share price, but you know, if EMC loses VMware, you could have a lot of thousands and thousands of people unemployed in your neck of the woods in New England, or VMware could be the lead dog. Again, all this going on, where's the value? What's going on? Why is this corporate raider pushing the envelope on VMware and EMC? Well, this, the, what's going on is the stock has gone sideways for years. Uh, I mean, even, even you look at VMware up and through July, S&P was up a few points, you know, VMware was down. And so there's been huge pressure from investors. The other piece of this is 55, 60, 60% of EMC's valuation is accounted for by the 80% of VMware that it owns. So investors are saying, well, wait a minute, I look at NetApp as a much smaller company, but it has on a revenue base, a revenue multiple, much higher valuation. What if we spun out EMC as a standalone company, <laughs> spun out VMware, we'd make a lot more money as investors. Let's do it. They could care less about the 10-year roadmap. They want their cash now. So what EMC has done But this VMware, is the short-term perspective. Of, of, 
that's problematic. Uh, they're investors, right? Gordon Gecko, as you say, I think you're right on there. So what, what, has, what has EMC and VMware done? They've done what any company would do in this day and age, stock buybacks and dividends, right? So <laughs> instead of spending money, I mean, they spend a lot on acquisitions, but they have to balance it out. Stock buybacks, dividends, acquisitions, R&D, it's the balancing act. So this is where you get what D. Raj was talking about is that steady incrementalism, you know, keeping the investors at bay, throwing off cash, being able to attract new talent, having enough money to be able to acquire new companies, it's the cartel model. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we asked Joe Tucci that federation, but this comes back down to what will EMC do now? I mean, obviously Joe Tucci's uh, tenure as CEO, his contract is up next year, early in the year, and then the truce that happened, they gave him the LA Capital two board seats, that expires tomorrow. So are we going to hear something on stage in these keynotes that's going to address that, or are they going to let that sleeping dog lie there, what do you expect to see? What does your gut tell you? They're not going to touch it in the keynotes, in, in my opinion. In the keynotes, we're going to talk about the software-defined everything. Um, and it's going to be, what, is, what, is, what do big companies do at shows like this? They bring out the marketing and the messaging and they lay out a vision of the future so that they appear and are relevant to the customers because they know if they're not relevant, they're toast. And so they're going to lay out a vision of the software-defined data center virtualizing networking, virtualizing storage, making things simpler, yeah. connecting to the cloud, that's what we're going to hear. It's going to be a heavy, heavy, heavy dose of messaging. I don't think they're going to touch the acquisition or the, uh, the other rumors. The two scenarios, by the way, just to lay them out, is that EMC will reacquire the 20% that it owns in VMware. That's one scenario. The other scenario is the flip side of that is VMware takes on a ton of debt and acquires EMC, <laughs> which should yeah. be, talk about unnatural acts. Or that EMC like creates some sort of basketball. holding company to put every Everything in there. So we're gonna wrap well, here. Well, that's what they have now. We're gonna wrap. We're gonna go to the keynotes right now. Again, the public cloud market is driving this. Wikibon just put out the first research. Wikibon.com for the new public cloud market share numbers are out. First uh, research firm to do that. Again, the public cloud is driving all this. Amazon, all this disruption. We're gonna go to the keynotes now to hear from uh, VMware live here in San Francisco. We'll be right back. <laughs>